Welcome. Probability and statistics are meant to model real-life situations where uncertainty plays a role. For instance, think of an engineer that wants to determine some property of a new material, say its thermal coefficients or its strength. Ideally, one experiment would give the required value, but in practice, a series of experiments will all give slightly different values. Random effects, usually put under the name random errors, play a role. Random variables describe in a quantitative way situations where multiple outcomes are possible, in some way depending on chance. They sort of convert outcomes to numbers and also tell you what are the probabilities of the possible numbers. As a very easy example, think of throwing a die. If you are only interested in the number that comes up, and not, for instance, on the position of the die on the table, and if you suppose that it is a fair die, then the process of throwing this die is captured by the random variable with possible values 1 up to 6, each with probability 1 over 6. The relevant information can be put in the form of a table containing the possible values together with their probabilities. It is common practice to denote the random variables with capital letters. Let's call the random variable describing the behavior of a die x. One way to describe the behavior of a random variable is by the so-called probability mass function small p. By definition, p of k is the probability that the random variable x takes on the value k. For the random variable x corresponding to the die, p of k equals 1 over 6 for the integers k between 1 and 6, and p of k equals 0 for all other values of k, including non-integer k. The table above just summarizes the probability mass function for the values that the random variable can take on. And here is the graph of the function. Now let's look at a slightly more complicated example. Suppose messages are transferred from a sender to a receiver and during the transfer errors may occur. To keep matters simple, suppose that the messages are sequences of bits, that is zeros and ones. And suppose that errors occur with a probability of 10%. So if a bit zero is sent, the probability that it is received as zero equals 0 0.9 and with probability 0 0.1 it is received as a 1. Likewise, if a 1 is sent. Furthermore, it is assumed that the errors occur independently of each other. We are interested in the number of errors in a message of 3 bits, and we denote this random number by capital N. Note that N is a random variable, as we don't know beforehand the value it will take on. For instance, if the message sent is 100 and 101 is received, n gets the value 1. What are the values that n can take on? Well, in a message of 3 bits, there can be at most 3 errors, of course, and any number from 0 to 2 is also possible. So the value, values that n can take on with a positive probability are 0, 1, 2 and 3. Next, what are the probabilities of these values? In other words, what is the probability mass function of n? In class you will learn that n has a so-called binomial distribution, but for this relatively small example, the probabilities are found just from scratch. In order to obtain the probabilities, we have to find the outcomes that correspond to the values of n. How then to describe the outcomes? In other words, what shall we take as sample space omega? There are several ways to define the sample space, and an easier sample space may lead to an easier analysis. So at this point, it is important to make a suitable choice. The most direct way is to let the sample space consist of all combinations message sent versus message received. So it basically contains all bit sequences of length 6. Then for each outcome, n becomes the number of differences between the xi and the yi. 
Note that this sample space has 2 to the power 6 elements, so to find probabilities we would have to do quite a lot of counting. To arrive at a smaller, more convenient sample space, I let the sample space consist of all sequences of length 3 containing the letters C and W, where the letter C stands for a bit that is transferred correctly, and the letter W for a wrong bit. Now for each outcome, n is just the number of w's it contains. Again, n is a function from the sample space omega to the set of real numbers. Of course, for this sample space, the outcomes do not all have the same probability. Because of the assumed independence of errors, the outcome triple C has probability 0.9 times 0.9 times 0.9. And since this is the only outcome for which n gets the value 0, the probability of n to become 0 equals 0 0.9 cubed. The outcome CWW has probability 0 0.9 times 0 0.1 times 0 0.1. And this is one of the three outcomes for which n becomes 2. The other two outcomes are WCW and WWC and they have the same probability as the outcome CWW. So the probability that n gets the value 2 is equal to 3 times 0 0.009. The n instances n equals 1 and n equals 3 are handled analogously. And putting everything together gives the table as shown. Again, the table summarizes the probability mass function P which can also be shown graphically. In the examples, the random variables x for the die and n for the number of errors could take on only finitely many values. Such random variables are called discrete. This finally explains the title of this video. In class you will learn about an alternative way to completely characterize discrete random variables, namely by way of the distribution function. And also a few frequently used random variables will be introduced. See you in class.